Okay, I'm going to continue my reading, and before I do, I'll mention I am using my laptop as a camera instead of my phone, so we will see how the video turns out. I think I got a better quality on my phone, but we'll see. Uh, right now, <clears throat> I'm going for what I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a little bit as I move along. But right now, I am in the book of Joshua. This will be chapter 6. Jericho is taken and destroyed. Only Rahab and her household are saved. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. So, in other words, they closed the gate and they wouldn't let anybody in or out. They just shut the, they, they shut up the entryways so that Israel couldn't sneak in. Verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of rams, <coughs> of ram's horns. On the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass, that when they make a loud blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So I'm sure we're all familiar with this, you know. For six days you march in a circle of the city once. On the seventh day you go seven times, so a total of thirteen times. At the end, there's a big blast of the seven trumpets, and all the people are to shout with a great shout. That's the plan. That's what God has told them to do. Verse 6, And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets, and the re rearward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I, I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. So no noise was to be given on the on, until Joshua gave the signal. No sound. Verse 12. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of rams, of rams horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually, and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but the rearward came after the ark of the Lord. The priests going on and blowing the trumpets, and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. So we follow the plan. The priests are blowing their trumpets every time they go around the city. We have part of the army going before them, then we have the priests and the ark, and then we have part of the army after them. So the priests aren't leading yet. The priests are in the middle. And then the people shout. They're given this word. For the first six days, no sound except the trumpets. No, no shouting. No, no voice could be heard. On the seventh day, when that, after the seventh time, then we shout. Verse 17, And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, 
because ye hid the messengers that we sent. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are, con are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. So, and they utterly, one more verse. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. Okay. So Joshua's instructions here is, when you go into the city, kill everything. Everything that's alive has to be killed. The only things that are saved are the gold, the silver, the brass, and the iron, which have to be given to the treasury of the Lord. No person can keep any portion of it. But the clothes, those have to be destroyed. Everything that's not of these four metals, we destroy it. Don't take any of it. Anyways, they do what the Lord said, the wall collapses. Let's finish the chapter before we continue here, before we do any more discussion. Verse 22. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out this country, Go into the harlot's house, and bring out thence the woman, and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in, and brought out Rahab, and her father, and her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred, and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire, and all that was therein. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout the country. Now, of course, the city of Jericho is rebuilt later on, but Notice that they go in there and they just start destroying the city. But Joshua tells the spies first, they says, you got your job is to go get Rahab and all of her family and bring them out. Now, I don't think this happened while they were destroying the city. See, they went in and they slaughtered everybody. And when all the fighting was done, he said, OK, now go in, tell those people to get out because we're going to burn the place. Which they did. They then burnt the city to the ground. Now, there's a lot of speculation about how this particular strategy helped collapse the walls. Some people have speculated that the constant marching around the walls and the sound of the trumpets and everything weakened the foundation so that when all the thousands of Israel let out that giant shout, it just caused the walls to collapse. It might be. I don't know. There's other speculations. Too. I think that's the most prominent one, the most, uh, most popular, but it doesn't need a natural explanation. We don't need to know how it happened. God told Joshua what to do. He followed what God told him to do to the letter, and because of that, God leveled the wall. Now, God, did God give him the strategy because it would weaken the walls and collapse it all? Maybe. But it could have been that God, maybe God sent some angels in there. They collapsed the wall for him because Joshua and Israel had been faithful to God's command. And I think that's all that we really need to know is that Joshua and Israel obeyed the Lord. They were faithful in doing what God told them to do. And so the promise was fulfilled. God said, you do this and the walls will collapse. They did that, so the walls collapsed. There is no need for further explanation. Now, I will say, it says Rahab lives in Israel to this day. In other words, the book of Joshua was written 
while Rahab was still alive. So the book of Joshua was written fairly early on in the reign of the judges. I mean, she may have lived a hundred years or so, but she was already an adult woman, so I'd say no more than about 60, 70 years after the reign of the judges is when the book of Joshua was written. And that's how we know it, because right there it tells us. Now, Rahab will come up again in a, a little later during the time of the judges, so keep her in mind, because she has not gone from the narrative quite yet. But we're going to leave that here, and I will see you in the next one.